Greetings. This is General CJG here, and I got with me here. Uh, Jedi Knight Luke, how are we? Well, apparently, Star Wars Outlaws decided to rear its head again. Well, Ubisoft more like decided to bring it because they released an official story trailer. And well, let's see how this one's going. This is gonna be fun. So, you you ready to watch this one, Luke? Yeah, yep, this will be interesting for sure. Okay, well, then let's let's get on with it. In three, two, one, go. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy: Pikes, Crimson Dawn, hmm? Huts. It's a golden Huts. age for the underworld. The Empire controls every corner of the galaxy, mm -hmm. but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. Ah, yes. It's an opportunity to make millions. Okay, hmm. Vess. The underworld's favorite new scoundrel. We meet at last. What do you want? Zarek Vesh. They're new, rich, and lethal. You crossed their boss, Sliro, and now he wants you gone. Rob his fortune, buy your freedom. This job, it's a death wish. Ah! I'm in. Out here, you live and die by your reputation. Oh, the point. survive, know the players. You're new to this world. What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Jabba, right? Look, don't no. you want anything? I got a whole crew surrounding the. Okay, we're skipping that part. For about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nix. Doing what we have to to survive. This job is my one shot at freedom. But if we're gonna pull this off, we need the right crew and the right ship. Yes. Come on. I hire you because you were one of the best hunters in the outer rim. She's more connected mm -hmm. than you let on, Slero. Bess is mixed up in something bigger. The outer rim is a dangerous place. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. But all I want is to live free. So I'm gonna risk it all. Mm. Hold on, Dick! Oh, it's a sorry like. <laughs> ah, no, that was quite dry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's how you end it? With a stupid promotion to freaking uh, three get er get early access. Oh god. Oh, that's one way to end it. And August 30. So look, what do you think? Honestly, uh, I'm I'm not particularly blown away by that. Mm, yeah, I wasn't too much either, aside from, I guess, seeing Hansel and Carbonite and a few other things, but I wasn't too blown away either, story-wise. I mean, I mean, Ubisoft has not really been the best story-wise in this particular recent years, unless it's Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. So, I mean, even their Avatar game, they didn't have that much... Like, I didn't hear much greatness on the story after the opening, so... So I don't, I don't know if this one is going to have the same problem as that. I mean, yeah, and I believe wasn't there text at the. What did the text at the bottom say in the very beginning? So do you mind going all the way back? Do you mind going all the way back? Oh, it's the typical capture in engine or images appearing game. It's a typical of don't take this for it seriously kind of product. Yeah, but how much are you? It, it, you see, but it says captured. It says um, captured uh, in 
in engine, but is it really? Uh, I mean, in in I mean, it doesn't look as good as you know an actual pre render. Considering anything, it does it does it seems to look legit. Um, but knowing, but here's the thing: Ubisoft has a reputation of making their games look very good in trailers, but when the mm. final product comes out, it actually doesn't. It actually has a few downgrades visually. Like that actually does happen. <laughs> so it's more. So they do tend to do that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's. Yeah, that is a thing with with you with Ubisoft. Uh, that's that's it, it happened with Watch Dogs, so that's Squid Unity. Uh, I ha- I don't think the Avatar games suffer from that. I actually think that probably was the exception. The singles for Sparks of Hope, but all the other games, yeah, no, they usually used to do much greater stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, and I mean. I don't know, like story wise, I mean, yeah, it's all the criminal organizations together, like the Pikes, the what, what were what were the others that, that he that the guy said? Crimson Dawn. Crimson Dawn. Crimson Dawn, uh oh god, I wish Kenson was here so he could tell us. But uh do you know who the Crimson Dawn is, Look, I have a feeling that they were shown up in some other this is Star Wars source that we don't know about. I think Crimson Dawn is the gang that Maul, that uh, Darth Maul somehow uh, hooked somehow. up with. Like, by, I think he, like, by by the time of Solo, I think Crimson Dawn appear in that. Oh, I would not be surprised if that is the case. Uh, yep, yep, it's the, yep, just looked it up, yeah, it's... It's is the gang from the solo movie, yep. Mm-hmm. With Kira being one of its leaders, but but then again, is this this game is it, does it take place? Oh well, Hansel's in Carbonite, so that means it has to be post in your hope. It's uh, between Empire and Jedi. In that in that case, in that in that case, then who knows if Kira is the one leading the show? Oh wait, it's probably one of the. It's probably in the. I think it was one of the Bounty Hunter comics or something that had Kira. But anyway, so in regards to the trailer, yeah, we see this uh, this you know cr- this criminal mas- mastermind uh, leader. Apparently, he was double crossed by our fem- uh, by our female protagonist. Uh, I think she was Nix, if I re- if I recall, that was her name. And and yeah, the it's. Like, what do you think of the like the story? What do you think is the angle they're going? Like, aside from, I guess, a smuggler of sorts, rogue smuggler. Um, it's, see, I, I don't really know. Obviously, you're going to be going up against some. Uh, uh, you're going to be going up against some form of, um, uh, some form of you know, organization. Mm-hmm, yeah, or or multiple. Because you remember in the uh, in the previous gameplay review uh, that they showed off Outlast, that you could actually work for several, but if you gain favor with one, you could actually lose favor with the other. So even sending like bounty hunters and stuff to kill you. So it's mm. definitely a, it's definitely similar to say the wanted level of GTA or something like that. Um, don't know if you played anything similar to that. Maybe in Spider Man they have something like that. Uh, what is in favor? Wa- yeah. Uh, I don't believe there's any form of a of a wanted system in mm. those. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so that that is going to be interesting to see. Now, in, in regard in regards to the rest of the story, like yeah, we don't know the characters much aside from one of them being this uh, the droid, fr- uh, the commando droid from from freaking TCW. He's a bounty hunter of sorts. Like, what do you think of that one? Interesting, I guess. <sighs> He obviously had to have been reprogrammed. <laughs> mm. So that is interesting. And post by post and you hope. So that is definitely 
one of the remnants from the Clone Wars. So there's that. Oh, I know, and and yeah, Nyx visits Java's palace and we see, yep, Han Solo. He's right there in Carbonite. Mm -hmm. And and she and she was actually afraid to talk to Java. I wonder if it was because she saw she saw freaking she saw she saw Han Solo and she was like, uh, yeah, let's uh, yeah, I, I'm a bit afraid. But then they actually put her co close to Java and she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, and speaking speaking of. Speaking of Java, what do you think of his character model? If you see it, consider. I, I know, okay, I know this is not in engine, but obviously, well, there's a good chance that it's not in engine, or at least I hope it's it's not, because if this is in fact representative of the final product, Jabba doesn't look great. Hmm. Really, you don't think it look? He looks that good? No, it, to me he looks. To me, he looks really, kind of. I don't know. There's just. I, I don't know if it's just low quality textures or the way that he's stylized or something, but he looks flat to me, considering the standards of today's uh, graphical fidelity. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, if yeah. you compare, compare, compare Jedi Survivor, like pretty much anything from Jedi Survivor to this, and you'll see, and you get what I mean. Oh yeah, because Jedi Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order, they were made by Respawn, and they, well, let's just say that they definitely know how to pull some really good tech. Whereas Ubisoft. Ubisoft has been strug struggling in regards to making their games be very not only unique looking or very good looking, but also to not be the same generic Ubisoft style open world formula they've done so many times. Like, so yeah, I I do wonder about the pikes the pikes here. You see, yeah, because she she definitely uh, Nix definitely has multiple like uh, like she also multiple factions. She clearly can work for one or the other. It seems like it's gonna be your choice. So in so in here, I don't think there's gonna be much or linear story because this is an open world game. Uh, so it probably will be more akin to say an open world RPG. Which I know how much some people don't like that because it means you can't really you, you don't have a straightforward story. You're gonna have a one where you don't know who made choices or whatever. And well, we know certainly Henson's not a fan of that. So mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I'm getting vibes that yeah, the, the story here is gonna be more of a of a you shape it up to whatever you want more than what it actually does. This planet. Have you seen this planet before? I don't know if mm. if I have or not. <laughs> it does look interesting. Those are supposed to be like kites. <laughs> yeah. This. Oh, that's the 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 layer of the crim the criminal mind. This place here. What what place is that? The the do those guys look familiar to you? Don't. Th I'm not sure. I recognize them. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't either. So yeah, what about this place where it's guarded by the Empire? Uh, it's like a jungle type place. See, I don't, I don't. Again, I don't really know. My initial, my initial, my initial gut instinct. Uh, was um, was something like Takodana because of the architecture, but I don't think it's that because the only notable building on Takodana is Ma is Maskanata's fortress, and I don't see that or anything that looks like that here. Mm. Not to mention, there seems to be like multiple like vendors and and such as you can see there. Yeah. I, I, so no idea <laughs> yeah no idea yeah no idea on that either 
Uh, but yeah, because because planet variety is definitely there has to be a variety of places because otherwise because there isn't. Well, this open world game's gonna you know. Wait, no. Oh, hang on. Mm -hmm. So this isn't this isn't supposed to be. No, it can't be. This isn't supposed to be Naboo, is it? And the reason uh, I'm wondering is because if you look at the buildings, particularly the one on the right. Mm -hmm. And the and the roof. Uh, oh and, yeah, I just see it. And like the general shape, that does remind me a lot of of some of Naboo's most notable architecture, like the Thede Palace. I I think that isn't supposed to be. This isn't supposed to be Naboo, is it? Not that I'm that I'm aware of. Though I do see why you say that because yeah, it does look like. Uh... Because it does kind of kind of resemble Naboo, but at the same time not so much. Because uh, the building on the left doesn't look too much like Naboo, and the emblem in the middle. So, in some ways it could be, in some ways it isn't. So, so who know, who knows on that? So, yeah. Oh, but uh, and and in regards in regards to. In, in regards to the, to the type of planets, it seems that the planets that we are going to be having is... Oh, Kajimi's one of them. <laughs> you know, from the sequel trilogy. Oh, from... Oh, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, Wait, yeah. isn't that... Kaji That's the planet which Babu Frick can, is found on, I think. Yep. And it's also the planet where Sorry Bliss comes from. Oh, or at least made her uh, made her debut. Yep. Okay, so we have that planet. Other planets that we have apparently are, of course, we get Tatooine. No surprise there. We get Toshal system. Toshal system. What the hell is that? It's apparently a moon. Then we get. Uh, God, we're getting Canto Bite. <laughs> Believe it or not, that I was thinking Canto Bite in the back of my head, in the back of my mind as we were looking at this. Um, this is Canto Bite then. Yeah, because Naboo is not listed in the list of plan of confirmed planets so far, so it's Canto Bite. <laughs> Damn. Oh dear. Yeah, and uh, other stuff in the Outer Rim Territories, uh, the Akiva system. Akiva, that's from... Uh, that planet from where is it from? Oh, oh, it's from the Aftermath Trilogy. <laughs> from the Aftermath Trilogy. Is this game going to be doing the legwork for the sequel trilogy? Is that what it is? Well, and Well, if it is, it wouldn't be the only project doing it. Because we've had, we've had Bad Batch. I think the Ahsoka series has done some of that. Uh, the uh, 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 what else has done sequel trilogy legwork as of late? Um, wouldn't wouldn't Mandalorian also be? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Tales of the <gasps> Empire, probably. Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah, don't forget about that one. Look, <laughs> so yeah, we do get an original planet called the Toshal system. So there, there is that, but the rest, yeah, the rest is pretty much taken from the freaking sequel trilogy. <laughs> oh. And of course, the original trilogy with freaking Tatooine. Though, though this is the planets confirmed so far. We who knows? Maybe there will be more planets because if we just count them from the back of our hand, it's just one, two, three, four, five. Is that does the does the article? Does the article say all planets confirmed so far, or does it say all planets confirmed? Because no, no. So far, I'm so far. I'm going with what uh, Wikipedia uh, has listed. It has multiple. It had multiple sources, uh, it, which apparently were in the premiere trailer. It's 
This wouldn't be the first game. I mean, it, it, it would be nice if there are more planets, definitely. But it's not... It's at least eight, if you ask me. If it's going to be an open world, exploring Star Wars Galaxy, it's at least eight. But it's... But, it, but, it, but if that is the only handful of planets we get, it wouldn't be the only time, considering most Star Wars games, even going back to the LucasArts Golden Age, tend to only have a handful. I mean, true, but this is true. But unlike those, this is supposed to be a full-on open-world Star Wars game. This is not, this will actually be the first open-world game because uh, Ragtag was originally going to be that, and well, you know how that went with that one. So the fact that Wait. it's only like five years is not going to be that good, huh. if, if you ask me. Especially because. Well, not only is it open world, but this is supposed to be what exploring the galaxy and, and everything. And and if Ubisoft literally just goes with five planets, it's like, come on, there could be much more than that. I mean, I mean, how is it that? I mean, how many does GS Survivor has? Look, uh, let me think. Coruscant, uh, Kobo, uh, uh, Nova Garon, uh, Tanalor, Jeddah. So that's five. Uh, do, 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 there might be. Hang on a minute. Let me. That's most of them. But let me just check. Uh, let Let me just. Uh, let me just check. Yeah. I, I know that's most of them. Let me just check them all to be sure. Ah, I know okay. Fallen Order so has like six. Was, uh, Jedi Survivor also has six. Oh wait. Mm. Uh, wait. No, Fallen Order had, uh, Fallen Order had Braca, uh, Bagano, Zepho, Kashyyyk, Dathomir, Ilum, and, and Ilum, mm -hmm. and Ner, which is yeah. the Fortress of Inquisitoria. So that's seven. Survivor mm -hmm. has six worlds: Coruscant, Kobo, Jeddah, uh, shattered a shattered moon. Uh, Nova Garon and Tanalor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so seven to six. Okay. Well, then Adla supposed to be full open world. This is not meant to be like Jedi Survivor or Fallen Order, where it's a Dark Souls like Metroidvania. Uh, it's not. Like, this is not supposed to be like that. This is supposed to be more of a open world uh, smuggler type uh, game that. That you basically can get factions towards multiple uh favor of multiple factions and to explore and do other stuff so this is supposed to be much more open than that if literally it's just five planets and that's gonna be lame if you ask me because that's just limiting the star wars galaxy which is supposed to be huge just limiting it to just five like come on there has to be more seriously there really has to be more what do, what do you think, Look, uh, I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now something. Uh, now, if you see like pictures like this, you. Uh, I okay. I got a question. Look, how much do you think the the game is going to let you explore the planet? Like, how much? Obviously, not the entire planet. How, but how how big do you think the maps are going to be? Uh. Well. <sighs> See, well, we would hope that it would at, at least at, at least be equal to the scope of the planets that we get in Jedi Survivor. Ideally, it would be more than that because this is supposed to be, as you say, an open world RPG, but at least be equal to Survivor, to mm -hmm. Jedi Survivor. However, I don't know. I mean, the game could be... Every planet could be huge and I'll end up eating my words. And if that's what happens, then I will. But I don't know. I somehow get the impression that Ubisoft are going to cheapen out. And and already we can get a glimpse of that by looking at the list of plan uh, places you can explore in Tatooine. Apparently, the only list of places is the Dune Sea, ja Northern Dune Sea, Java's Palace, and Mos Eisley, one of the canteen, uh, Chamon Spaceport Cantina. So where the hell is Mos Espa? Hey, where's Mos yeah. Espa? Yeah, I was going to say because, I mean, 
to use, this may not be the fairest of comparisons, but Lego Skywalker Saga gives you three whole territory, gives you all three, um, well, well, three major territories of Tatooine to explore. Moss, e Moss Esper, Moss Eisley, and the Junlan Wastes. Um, and all three, yes, I know it's a Lego game, so obviously the scale will be different, but each of those territories, each of T Tatooine's individual territories are as large as some of the other entire planets in Lego Skywalker Saga, so it's uh, I mean, again, maybe not the fairest of comparisons, but that's all I could think of off the top of my head. Yeah, it it makes yeah. It's I really I really just hope that that um that there's more to be honest that because. I mean, okay, when you explore Tatooine, what are the places that you want to go, like, what are the places that you think should be explorable in Tatooine, like, all of them, or at least most of them? Like, which ones do you think? Name them in the back of your mind. Uh, quick quick question. Does the Dune Sea count as part of the John and Way story? Is that John and Way story? Is that his own, is that its own territory? Um, uh... John Junlan wastes. Uh, let's see, Junlan wastes. Uh, Junlan wastes. From, if I recall, that seems to be a that seems to be a diff, uh, different. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's another place because that's where the large homestead of Ben Kenobi is. So it's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's somewhere and also where the Tusken Raiders are. Whereas whereas the Dun is where Jabba's palace is. So it's it's different. So so Dune Sea and Junlin Waste are two different places in Tatooine. Okay, and where is is Anchorhead its own territory, or is that within one of the other ones? Anchorhead, it probably would be in the. Uh, it probably would be in the, in the same. Uh, uh, apparently, it's a small town, so it's not something. Uh, you know, bit, uh, it doesn't seem. It doesn't seem to be some. The we have seen Anchorhead though. We have seen it in Disney Star Wars. And guess where did we see it? Where? <laughs> Take a big guess. Look. Please don't tell me it was featured in a blink and you miss it thing in Rogue One. No, 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 no. Oh, thank, oh, thank no, you. No, but it's something almost as bad as Rogue One. I'm talking of the Kenobi show. Oh fuck me! <laughs> yep, yep, it was there. Obi Wan traveled to Anchorhead uh, in an EOP to catch a transport that would take him to his job at Tibidon Station. So where he slides, you know, we harvested the dead, the dead meat from the sand whale. Uh, so yep. So oh, oh, and I and I just remembered. Uh, going off topic slightly but you know the excellent kenobi book from the eu by john jackson miller yep do you remember where that bar fight takes place mm -hmm. the bar fight for that book's uh prologue do you remember uh -huh. where that takes place uh -huh. in anchorhead <laughs> yeah by the way look most eisley iconography <laughs> so oh, th this is go. one this is one of the see so this is one of the places that we'll be exploring, huh? Yeah, well, we need we need more than just Mos Eisley, the Mos Eisley, uh, Dune Sea, and that's well, that's the main regions and the specific places there being Java's Palace and the Cantina. That's that can't be. There has to be more. Come on. If if Tatooine is just those two places, then imagine in the other planets like Kajimi. Kajimi, there's even less. Shit to work with, because <laughs> only the movie and its in media give us <laughs> that shit. Now, granted, Ubisoft could get creative and you know create stuff, but this is Ubisoft we're talking about. <laughs> 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 oops, yeah, uh, oops on that one. <laughs> yeah, so let's. So uh, next, next in regards to to what planets or 
uh, ne- just next with what we see in the trailer. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, we see, well, we see the under- underworld. It seems like uh, K uh, Bess is gonna have to. She's gonna have to be doing some some stealth, as we see here. So stealth is gonna be a thing, which, okay, a, ste- a stealth system. I mean, how much? How many stealth systems have been implemented in Star Wars before? Uh, oh, we had well, if you remember, there's that one level. Is it Karen Doc in Jedi Outcast? Granted, that wasn't really a stealth system. It was an entire stealth level, but still you had to be stealthy through to get through that. Um, what, was it Was it, Was it? it Karen Doc in Jedi Outcast where you had to be stealthy? Mm-hmm. Uh, which one again? Karen, Jedi Outcast Karen Doc. The one where you had to be stealthy for a whole. Ah, level. yes. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah, to make sure they, that they didn't touch the alarm. Yeah. Yeah. So that th- there wasn't really a stealth system as such with Outcast. You just had to be extremely careful and know what to interact with. Um, so there's that. Uh, there was the very, very uh, basic and borderline well well a little used stealth system in EA front 2 <laughs> um, oh god uh, that is something <laughs> yeah there, there doesn't seem to be many star wars games that that use stealth like probably yes you could experiment a little bit with something like jedi academy and such but yeah, there wasn't really much to do with stealth in many Star Wars games. I don't know if Bounty Hunter had it. No. Maybe, but not a mandatory mission where, oh, you can't be detected. You know, that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, oh, I do remember in the Clone Wars Sunset 2 game, there were a mission or two where were, it's scripted, but you basically could... Uh, we basically had to use kind of a stealthy approach of sorts to pretty much ambush certain enemies. Like in one mission, you ambush a convoy and then you wreck wreck them to no end. <laughs> so, so there there is that, but there wasn't but it isn't much. And and maybe in the Rock Squadron games, I think it was a mission or two where you had to like go like lay low or something to not be detected. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Rock Squadron two. I remember. The mission where you get the shuttle Tidarium, you actually have to fly low if it's in the night section or the day one to make sure the sensors don't detect you and to not shoot or anything. Otherwise, they would catch you and mission failed. So, so there have been some stealth systems before, but this one is going to be like the the closest we'll get to some to proper stealth system. But that's assuming they okay. Yeah, this is Ubisoft, and Ubisoft, you know, they pioneered one of the more uh, one of the more popular stealth. Uh, stealth action systems ever, you know, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, we... yeah, and I, and I was going to say about uh, Assassin's Creed because of something that comes up a little bit later on in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in, where, in which part, look? I can't remember exactly where, but but the moment is uh, the, the lead character jumping across a couple of rooftops. Oh, it is here. It's it, it's here. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. So you got that sliding. You got there. You go. You see that jumping there, which is very Assassin's Creed, Uncharted, yeah. Tomb Raider esque. Yeah, yeah, indeed. It makes. Uh, mm, okay, question. Do you think they're gonna do it more Assassin's Creed style or more Uncharted style in regards to the platforming and rooftops? Given that this is Ubisoft, it would probably make sense for it to be more Assassin's Creed inspired. Mm. Yeah, I, I do think so too. Yeah, there was a li- there was a bit of that in the Avatar game where you can actually climb the trees and actually scale scale them and go and go at it. You know, Tarzan style swords. If you've seen the Avatar movie, then you know how they move in trees. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there there was that. Only thing is, there wasn't much to. There wasn't much reason to do it. There was some stealth in that game, but they're hard. But stealth was not really that much. For, actually, the stealth kind of sucked in the Avatar game, from what I've heard. 
so it wasn't really that viable it was just better just go guns blazing so who knows how the hell it's going to be done in this game like this i don't know like it, it depends it, it depends on that and i know we're talking more about the gameplay than the story but uh, it's the more interesting stuff to talk about when it comes to this game because it's supposed to be open world because it's story-wise because this is an open world and it's more of a you choose you can gain favor or lose with the fat with the factions i think the story is not going to be more dynamic there's not going to be something straightforward and simple to to glean into like you know you're not going to by default be allied with the pikes or that's how it went in the canon so yeah it def definitely Hanson will be more talking about that than us too, because us too we're going to be talking more of the gameplay, even though this is a story trailer. <laughs> but uh, there are we can definitely see some some story moments. I can hear how uh, the mercenary is like, yep, going to, <laughs> yeah, as you can see. So so there's going to be some inter some interesting moments, but I but I feel like they're going to be few and far between, knowing Ubisoft's track record with storytelling. So, have you played any Ubisoft games? Look, aside from Episode Three, the game. <laughs> well, that's the handheld version, to be specific. Um, yeah. I have, I have played. I, li well, to an extent, uh, the first two Assassin's Creed games. Mm. The stories in those, the second games was really good. Uh, the first one was this we weird, like, see, see like this weird like perspective where basically instead of being cinematic it was more like you were like a fly in the wall looking at the, uh, the characters talk it was it was not that interesting it made the storytelling look more boring than it actually was like the story itself was not that interesting because of how they framed it so that's on Assassin's Creed 1. Assassin's Creed 2 that's more straightforward actually having proper cutscenes characters dialogue it just made the storytelling so much better so yeah and even with that the story was also pretty interesting so this, so the story seems like it's going to be more closer to AC2 look, at least from uh, if I want to draw some comparisons from what you played. So in that sense, what do you think? Well, that, yeah, it wouldn't. Um, it it wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense to do the AC1 approach uh, for a for a Star Wars game story. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. Like, ima imagine doing that type of framing where basically the two characters are in a room, but the entire camera is like just in like a wall or something, and not even framed as a camera, like you, like, you know, like a camera filter or something. No, it literally is just a camera positioned in a place where you think a fly would be there or a cat or security cam. Like, and, and in that sense, yeah, it wouldn't be that cool. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I don't know about, about the about the about the characters look like the only one that seems to be even the most remotely interesting i guess would be the the female protagonist but and also returning ones like java and uh, and i guess the pikes to see what the hell have been doing and i mean i i want to say i care about the crimson thorn but it's from solo and that movie you know <laughs> it's solo most people mm -hmm. don't care about that one so so yeah like it will be interesting you know one thing that would be fascinating, but it's not going to happen, is that is is that somehow the events of the, like somehow the events of the movie took place in the background, and you just heard of them, and then maybe there's a time skip or something, and the event and the events at the beginning of Return of the Jedi already happened in, in Tatooine, and then you re like first you visit Java's palace before Return of the Jedi. You know, like you know, in the middle of it, and and Han Solo is still there and something, and Java's there. But what if you did it after the events of Tatooine happened, Return of Jedi? Im imagine. What do you think of that look? Oh, as as in um, as in the as in the sequence of because of the game being an open world RPG, the sequence of events and the uh consequences and outcomes vary is that what you're saying like depending on the choices you make no more that would be interesting no more like the story continues the main story and then there's like a one point of story like in the one third that apparently has uh, has like a one year skip of sorts and uh and while the rebel and in that one year skip the rebellion is already fighting the empire and endor while you uh you get the chance to revisit to revisit Joss palace in uh 
in Tatooine. And there you see, not only is Han Solo gone, but Jabba's also dead. So now, now who's going to be the one giving oh. the, the quest or something? You know, that will be interesting. Okay, 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 yeah. Yeah, what do you think of that type of idea? Yeah, that would be interesting. As long as, long as this doesn't intrude on because i'll be honest that's that was something i was kind of concerned about w when we were just watching the trailer what if this intrudes with or or even worse tries tries to overwrite the films which i really wouldn't uh, want it to do well i mean to be fair it is star wars in general has tr been trying to overwrite events from the films and even their own media so i mean the sequel trilogy is notorious for that uh so i wouldn't be surprised if they are uh, if they are if they would do it but yeah they shouldn't but uh who know who knows on that um so there is that and now I think about it. Look, looking at this at this screenshot here, do you think the graphic fidelity looks good, or it needs some more better resolution or something? I would say it's at most okay. I know games shouldn't be all about graphics, but I don't think the Han Solo carbonite block is quite as detailed as it should look. Mm -hmm. Now I know some. I know some would say it's, an, it's because it's an open world game, so there's like less detail or something. Why I think games like GTA Five and uh, Assassin's Creed Four aren't the biggest lookers. Though Assassin's Creed Four Black Five actually looked pretty good. GTA Five for its time, it was the, like the most one of the most advanced open world games back then, in 2013. So, I mean, there there can be open world games that look really good, and suppose and we're in next gen right now. You know, PS Five, Series X, PC. We really should be getting some really good. You know, bang for bang for a buck when it comes to graphics, but but who knows on Ubisoft? They really they really tend to downgrade their graphics. Usually, in the rare cases this is not the case. But here's the thing: even if the graphics were not downgrade, performance, mm -hmm. how would that go? Oof. Oh, well, what do you think on that? Now, don't judge in the trailer because me it, likes. Uh, me I know. Likes I know. Dip, dip. It depends on how well the game is optimized. And of course, we, we, the whole thing with, with current gen is you get the choice of uh, enhanced visual fidelity over, you, you know, for um, for a, a reduced but still smooth enough frame rate if fidelity mode has been optimized correctly. Or mm -hmm. you trade the, the enhanced texture quality, i.e. ray tracing, for... Uh, for better performance so it all depends on how the game is optimized and given that this is ubisoft uh let's just say well well they, this is no secret they don't exactly have the best track record when it comes to in-game performance no they, no they don't um their latest uh oh god their latest game was skull and bones <laughs> Oh God! Talk about mediocre as fuck. Oh Christ! Yeah, Skull and Bones definitely not good on that front. And apparently, I also heard the PC port was also good. It was not good either. So, ish. Yeah, not good there. And but even if we somehow split Skull and Bones, which we shouldn't because it's from Ubisoft, uh, there is the Avatar game, which looked really good, but performance seemed to be a problem uh, across the board. So that definitely is going to be a concern. Now, there could be the... Though Ubisoft would be stupid to not add this option, but, but imagine if they literally just gave us quality mode, no performance mode option at all. Oh, oh shit. If... If we only get quality mode and this is as bad as, and the performance happens to be Assassin's Creed Unity bad, for example, oh, we'd be in for a rough ride. Uh, yeah. Or, or, or worse, it could be like the quality mode from the Avatar game where it had to have frame pacing and a few frame drops. Not stable. So, or worse, it could be like Skull and Bones! <laughs> Uh yeah, but hey, uh hey, you know, at least it ain't visual diarrhea like another life service game we know all too well. <laughs> Suicide Squad. 
Oh, you had. <laughs> you just had to reference that shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, sometimes I like referencing that. Uh, so yeah, but more, but more specifically, yes, with Skull and Bones, that game had a lot of like uh, ship combat. That was the only point of that game, and that was just gathering shit and doing it was like one of the most lazy open world games that ubisoft had done or not lazy more like kind of rushed and just uncooked underbaked like it was just not good now skull and bones had a long history of development so so it could have just been that they really just couldn't didn't know what the hell to do with that game so very comparison would be the avatar game but the avatar game like that uh again like the story was just like it seemed interesting at first, but then, but but then later it was like not much, and then, and then who knows on uh, on the quest and stuff. So it was just typical Ubisoft formula. So, who, so yeah. What what do you expect this game is gonna be look in regards to Ubisoft open world shit? Well, it. It's difficult to say, but... And I know you shouldn't judge what the gameplay is going to be like off the back of a story trailer. But, but that initial gameplay reveal, I thought, was a lot more exciting than what this story trailer is giving us. It could, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I agree on that. And it seems that a lot of people agree, because if you actually look at the likes to dislikes ratio look... Uh, oh <laughs> shit! Yeah, yeah. So not good. <laughs> not so, good. Ooh. So, so either one of two. Uh, so, so the final product is gonna go either one of two. Well, this is going by the looks of things. Then one of two ways. Either. They showed the best of the best with that initial gameplay reveal, and they're just not delivering on the story department, or, or rather, that that was the best of the bit, the best bit, and that the rest of the game won't be anywhere near as good, and it has a crap story. Or, and of course, this would be the easier pill to swallow: the game will be fun to play, but the story is not exciting. And given oh. that this is a Star Wars game, the story kind of matters, Ubisoft. Just <laughs> saying. Yeah. Uh, there's other reasons why the dislikes look, but um, but people are saying, never believe Ubisoft until you try the game yourself. And then somebody said, remember, never pre-order from Ubisoft. <laughs> and then somebody else says, remember, this is, Ubisoft, this is a Ubisoft game. <laughs> Wow. Oh, and then somebody said Ubisoft plus Disney Star Wars equals zero credibility. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Ubisoft told me to be comfortable not owning their games. I'm going to be very comfortable not buying this. Oh, yeah, because Ubisoft at one point did actually say that, yeah, you should, yeah you're not really going to get comfortable owning games anymore. Uh, they did say that a few months ago. So, yeah. Speaking of owning Ubisoft stuff, um, yeah, so so look, uh, we gotta talk about this. Uh, the the information in regards to the release. Yeah, so okay, look, so from before I tell you all the details, looking at that, what do you think? Uh, to quote the Emperor from Battlefront Two. The original i am i i am not amused <laughs> i know i seem yeah. to be pulling that i want that one out a fair bit lately <laughs> yeah so okay <clears throat> look so what so what's going on here well apparently ubisoft decided to have several versions of this game yeah because because apparently we, we can't seem to get away from, you know, selling games at, you know, multiple versions. It just has to be multiple because we just can't sell just one version that has all the content. No, 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 We just have to sell several. So, okay, several versions, though. So you get the base game, standard edition, $70. Yes, the same you... price as Marvel Spider-Man 2. Have you got a visual source for this 
As... Uh, yeah. I yes, I do. I am. I I just need to get the 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 link for itself. Oh, of course, of course. The of course. Look. So the so the actual link itself is the fucking Ubisoft store. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, so okay, look. Give me just a quick second. Or do you want me to tell you before I before you see it? No, no, no. I want you to sh to get it up there. Ah, then, you want you want to read it yourself? Excellent. <laughs> Don't yeah. you worry. Uh, I'll get it, it, it out in a bit. Let me just uh, share it. And yeah, there it is. Oh, <laughs> I love the title of this one. Uh, look at the title. Look. Star. Uh, oh. Yeah. You. 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 You've. You've done. <laughs> You've killed two birds with one stone, Ubisoft. You've cut a wound, and you're rubbing salt in it. Mm -hmm. The cheapest way to get it would be buying Ubisoft Premium Plus, uh, $18, just one month and you get it. So yeah, now uh, here's the additions, look! We are not in the mid-2010s anymore. This needs to stop. Right, let's actually look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wanna read it or shall I read it? No, no, I'll I'll read it. Oh, oh fuck! Uh, yeah, hey, uh, read it. Look. Right. So standard edition, base game, pre-order bonus. Standard edition. Oh, sorry, gold edition, base game, pre-order bonus, three days early access. <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> Remember when you said this isn't the 2010s anymore? Well, they didn't this get that is memo. Not the mid 2010s anymore, for fuck's sake. Why did they put a season pass in this game? I didn't know it had one until I just read it right now. <laughs> oh, it has. Oh, fuck. Now well, that, that explains a $40 increase. That rubs the salt in the wound fucking tenfold. Right. Ultimate edition. Base game. Pre-order bonus. <sighs> Three days early access. In my opinion, with that smaller window of early access, you may as well not even bother. Uh, <laughs> that fuck. That 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 thing. Dead center. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna call it that thing. This is the best. <laughs> The Rogue Infiltrator bundle and the Sarlacc Shark bundle. Sabak. Sabak. Oh, sorry. Sabak Shark bundle, whatever the heck those two things are. And a digital art book. Mm. Uh, what is it? Let's see. Uh, includes cosmetics for Kanker Blaster, Nyx, the Speeder, and Trailblazer Spaceship. Oh, it's just cosmetics. That's, that's just and what it is. Yeah. And oh, the, the art book. Yeah. And <laughs> there's a season pass information. Look, <laughs> they're locking. F they're they're not. It's not even a DLC story. It's an actual mission. It's oh. an actual mission that they are locked. Fuck that crack. Oh my god. Oh, I didn't know about this until now. Oh my god. shit. Uh, didn't the A pull this shit one time with Star Wars or whatever one of their franchises, uh, or or who, who in, pulled this shit? What as in as in locking a, a um, as in locking a mission, not a DLC story, but an actual mission. Yeah. Uh, in. Uh... I have a feeling it's either EA or Activision or Ubisoft who pulled that before. I know Ubisoft pulled the season pass with Avatar. Oh, which, by the way, that also got its own share of controversy. Uh, well, EA Front 1 had a season pass, but there wasn't anything story related in that. Mm. So, so then what? So then, uh, uh, 
We'll, we'll, we'll think about it later. So, yeah. And the Kessel Runner character pack. Additional cosmetics for K and Nyx. Yay! Two DLCs that will release. Hey, that's the same shit as Avatar. They also did two DLCs after launch. And a season pass. They're repeating the same shit that they did with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Uh, yeah, like if that game sold that much. Uh, spoiler alert, it sold for a bit, but... It wasn't the biggest hit that Ubisoft had. <laughs> so. Oh, and um. Oh yeah, way, you, were, you wanted to read the, the other way, one. We need to. We need to look at the. We need to actually look layer by layer, in the ultimate edition because I'm not no because I'm not seeing it because that list, as in that basic list, is not showing anything different. So we actually have to look into the layers, on the ultimate edition. Ah. Uh okay uh by the way the the one with the blue uh it's just it's the same as the ultimate edition one so it's why, just why have, they got that listed? why have they got that copied and listed separately oh because in the other one you can pay the 18 dollars a month for ubisoft plus that's why uh yeah three words fuck that shit. okay <laughs> anyway so do you mind with the ultimate edition, do you mind actually clicking on each thing just to? Ah, uh, you want me to? Pre I'm not pre-ordering that. No, no, shit. no, 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 no. Click on each of those and actually see what the information is. Okay, so that's the base game. Yada yada. Pre-order bonuses. Okay. Just just cosmetics. Uh, the uh, three-day early access. Ah. Oh. Yeah. You may oh, and look! Oh, and look at that! You need an internet connection and Ubisoft account to redeem the digital content. So to play the game three days early, you need that fucking internet connection. <laughs> oh, which? Oh, speaking of that, look that. Yeah, that reminds me. Uh, guess what? Look in regards to the physical version. There is none. No, no, no. There is one. It's just that the thing is. You need an internet connection to download the entire game. The same thing as Suicide. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep, the same thing as Suicide Squad killed the Rocksteady. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh. Right, next, before my <laughs> blood boils anymore. Uh, I again, my blood's going to boil anyway. <laughs> well, there's a system pass okay, already read that. that. Same thing, yeah. uh, the Rogue Infiltrator. It's, Bundle. it's just okay, cosmetics, yeah. Cosmetics. Yeah, and then a bad. digital, and then a digital art, and then a digital art book, book because force forbid they do physical art books anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And look, a selection of games, concept art, and visuals. Yeah, yeah. And you're next in my third board. Yeah, so that's pretty much it you know that should be you know there should just be two two editions just be the standard with the base game oh. and i guess pre-order bonus and the and the gold edition that is the base game oh. uh, pre-order bonus and it has a digital art book and a few more cosmetics oh. well hey but general remember the remember the old days where there used to be this thing either in the pause menu or main menu for games where you could look at concept art ah uh, yeah As yeah it, and guess which and guess which is one of those latest uh games that put that well not actually yeah maybe Baldur's Gate 3 did it but no I'm talking about another a certain remaster of a certain character that I have the figure right here standing and no I'm not talking about Star Killer uh, you mean you mean uh, a Metroid remaster yeah, Metro Prime Remastered. You can actually look at the entire concept art and everything just by unlocking the game. All you have to do is just actually get the, the scans to do it. It's it's an in, it's an in-game reward for for actually doing you know to going 100% completion. No, in here, nah, nah. Pay us more money so you can get a, <laughs> a peek behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. No thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. So, yeah, it's. I mean, if you ask me, I was. If you remember from my reaction to Outlaws before, I was. I was inside it, and even hoping that this game would be better than the mediocre fest that was Starfield. 
yeah, that still kind of angers me. But the more I hear about this, uh, and the more I see, I'm like, ah, uh, Ubisoft, you dumbass pieces of shit. You don't need to do a season pass. You don't need to do three days early access. You certainly don't need to make the physical version require internet to play. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, yeah. As someone who much prefers to play single player and play offline, I hate that games are go- that games are going that route these days. Yeah, but, Baldur, but, Baldur's Gate Three is the only recent one I can think of that you actually can buy the game. By the way, this is not Switch games because Switch Day you can actually have the game. No, that you can actually buy the game and they actually give you the physical version. Hell, they even the Ultimate Edition is a full on physical not only with the game included yeah because there's some ultimate editions that actually don't give you the the, the <laughs> game they give you the statue and shit but i don't give you the game but balls get three they give you the game and everything else that you exactly wanted but mm. everybody else yeah well but general you know with what you were just saying about how ubisoft don't need to do this that and the other uh-huh. well it's ubisoft and their mentality like a lot of other um shall we say inconsiderate uh, game publishers is we've got to have money so yeah. by the way look at this look there it, there it is three look three days early pre-order reward the season pass oh wait so one of the story packs is going to be dealing with java's palace oh <laughs> uh, yeah because look at cause look there it is wait so did... they didn't Please don't tell me that they shoehorned DLC footage into that the story trailer. No, I think no, I think it probably can be said Java, but if they're actually saving up Java the story DLC for later, then that means that in the base game, Java's just gonna be there, like just you just talk to him, you get a few missions or something, you get favors or not, and that's it. He's not gonna play any major roles or anything. Well, he'd better actually be in the game, and they'd better not have snuck in DLC footage. Uh, well, that's gonna be something, because uh, Ubisoft—they're liars when it comes to their trailers at times. So yeah. Oh, and look at that ultimate pack! Yay! <laughs> or more like nay. Just saying. She literally cosplaying as Lando, and here as freaking Paul Dameron. Well, we well yeah, but look at the. Look at look in the Jabba's Palace thing. You can see a Han Solo uh, skin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Han Solo skin. Yeah. Hmm. So so they're gonna be selling all sorts of uh, all, all sorts of cosmetics because why not? Hmm. Why not? I mean, I I I know that we're past the days of the cosmetics being in the game. Now you have to pay them with cosmetic microtransactions. Oh. Well, we're not entirely past that because Fallen Order and Survivor have plenty of cosmetics and you don't have to pay for them. There weren't some of them pre-order bonuses? Some of them were, yes, but you still got plenty of alternate outfits in the games themselves. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, true. And, and, also, and also as well, the ones that were the pre-order outfits in... The pre-order outfits in um, Survivor, because I don't think Fallen Order had pre-order outfits. Um, mm. There were other pre-order items there, but there were no pre-order outfit. It's at least I don't think so. No, oh, there weren't outfits. It was a lightsaber. Mm. But um, the pre-order outfits in um, Survivor were similar to the pre-order outfits you get with this, where the pre-order out. out- outfits were were um legacy character outfits mm. so you don't really so you don't really need those um mm. oh oh if you're willing to take the risk the galaxy is full of opportunity experience the first ever open world star wars game and explore distinct planets across the galaxy both iconic and new uh, so far, we've only seen one original planet. All the others are literally taken from Disney Star Wars sources, <laughs> and one of them from the original trilogy. So, already, 
already you're kind of lying a bit there, Ubisoft. And then <laughs> risk it all as k Best, an emerging scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life. Fight, steal, and I'll win your way to the galaxy's crime syndicates to join the galaxy's most wanted. Oh, so it is kind of like GTA in that sense. Uh, yeah. And uh, an original scoundrel story. Yeah, we'll see about the original part because this is Star Wars has not been original in a lot of ways. Maybe Fallen Order and Survivor, but still. Uh, that is some interesting uh, in image. Uh, explore distant locations, busting with, with cities and cantinas, outdoor landscapes. We'll see how big it is. Like, we'll see. Pilot your ship. Oh, in Drilling Dog Fights, the Empire and the Force. Oh, I bet they're going to try to do the Starfield where basically you can actually get into the planet's atmosphere and you can, uh, you know, like in space and you can actually dog fights. If they can do seamless, you know, space to ground and vice versa, I think in the first gameplay trailer it was. If they can do that, okay, they do have that over Starfield. I'll give them that because Starfield basically. really sucked in had that. Basically, if they can do what Battlefront 3 would have done. Or or No Man's Sky. Or Starlink Battle Atlas. One of those. Yep. And yeah. Customers have decided. Yeah, no, I don't care about that. Uh, the information here. In-game purchases. Oh. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Sim. You know what's funny? Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, that the teen rating and the simulated gambling is for basically similar to say the Pasak mini game from Knights of the Old Republic one and two, something like that, or or the or the slot machines in games like GT, inside GTA five in the in casinos, stuff like that. Basically, sim gambling with using in-game money, not real life money. If. Hmm. Mm. Okay, if if real if real money was a was a factor in this, then I would appreciate the the uh, the gambling uh, notation. But if it's you know, using in-game currency, then that's not an issue. No, it's not an issue. What I'm what I'm saying is that it's funny that until now they actually put simulated gambling, but every single game that has loot boxes, they didn't even bother putting any sort of gambling. <laughs> And Ubisoft it, is actually one of those that they got away with in the 2010s. It, I wonder if, well, I wonder if the controversy regarding uh, EA wow, Front Crunch. 2 is what caused them, granted that, granted um, the, the Ubisoft was still making other, were still making other games where the vulnerable, where the susceptible to, um, to spending real money, well, a ridiculous amount of it uh, in games. Um, they were still doing that, I'm sure, following the controversy. But I wonder if now, I, I wonder if now it's actually kind of being taken more seriously and that they have to put that in there. Uh, it's possible, yeah. Uh, audio seems like gonna be, there's going to be options for English, French, German, Spain, uh, Jap Japan. No. No option for Italian, Polish, or Chinese, Russian, Korean voices. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, either way, mo most people, you know, want to see Star Wars in English because, you know, the property is American. So, so yeah. And, yeah, so, and, yeah, by the way, I do think it was about from 2 EA controversy that no, that there's not many publishers putting loot boxes unless you're EA and 2K with its sports games, but uh, aside from the point. But yeah, so that seems to be it for Star Wars Outlaws look. So um, do, you got, do you got anything else to say on this one? Story-wise, not overly impressed. Uh, business model-wise, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the typical modern-day... Um, you know, pay extra to get this and that, especially with the Ultimate Edition. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, even with the Gold Edition, because it's got the Season Pass. Well, yeah, but that stuff can fuck off. The Season Pass on its own can also fuck off. I just... <laughs> I thought we were past that point. 
I really thought we were past that point now, but nope. Ubisoft is is one of the few that are keeping it up. Re if you remember, Avatar Frontiers Pandora had it, and now mm -hmm. this one has it. So uh, it seems that Avatar was the precursor for how Ubisoft would treat Outlaws. Mm. So, so yeah, all we can do is all we can do at this point is hope and pray that the game itself is actually good. Yeah, yeah, we'll pray and hope for that. Oh, by the way, Joe, Angry Joe also released his reaction, and he also ranted about the freaking Ultimate Edition and shit. So, yeah, this definitely is something that a lot of people are frustrated with. And yeah, I don't blame him. Yeah, uh, fuck this shit. They really should have just been two versions, no season pass. The Gold Edition should have just had some extra cosmetics and that shit. So, but... Who am I to say? I mean, uh, Ubisoft didn't think uh, like EA would fall in order. So, mm. so yeah. As for me, well, story was, eh. We'll see what we'll see what happens, and we'll we'll see how it how it goes. Uh, I know Hanson is more interested in just seeing the cutscenes for this one because he only cares about the story. Um, as for me, am I gonna play it? I don't know to be honest because. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it technically would be what I want, a Star Wars open world game that you can explore everything with seamless space to ground transitions. Uh, but that's assuming that they actually do it because Ubisoft is Ubisoft. So mm -hmm. and I don't really trust them that much uh, at this point. So uh, even less with that fucking season pass yeah, and the ultimate if, edition. Yeah, if, if the game falls short of its promise, like in terms of um, in in terms of being this grand uh, experience with huge with huge planets and whatnot, then I'll stick with Jedi Survivor. If and maybe Skywalker saga. and maybe Lego Skywalker Saga. <laughs> yeah, so I think Outlaws, I think, is one that we'll have to wait and see before we think about covering it. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like, I I want it to be better than Avatar, but this is Ubisoft, so who the fuck knows if if it's even gonna be better than that? So I would like to be better than that. I would like something better than Starfield, <laughs> and especially with the Star Wars IP. Come on, even if it's just a Star Wars, like I don't care if it's in the Disney Star Wars canon. Yeah, I know that's not my cup of tea, but but hey. I can I could just easily ignore all that and just enjoy for the gameplay like I did with Jeff on order like but but we'll see we'll have to see on this one so yeah there should be more planets let's hope so yeah and yeah but anyway yeah that's that's about it so yeah thank you all guys for seeing this live stream and we'll see you guys on the next State of Star Wars video bye bye may the force be with you.